Hi and welcome back to That Office Guy and today we're going to be taking a, another look at Microsoft Excel and specifically how to deconstruct some uh, annoying text strings when the raw data just hasn't come through in the way you might expect it. Chris, uh, this is something that you experience quite frequently. Yeah, I get this quite a lot at work. So um, basically, in a nutshell, we use several different systems, and I might ask for for the raw data from several uh, different systems, and you know, it's all jumbled up, and I kind of need to untangle it all in order to to sort of show a picture, I guess, of what actually is happening within the uh, the business. Excellent. So guys, if you find this useful and informative, do go ahead and hit that like button. Um, Chris really appreciates it, as do I. Um, and if you're not subscribed yet, do go ahead and subscribe to the channel. By being subscribed, you will be kept up to date with all of the videos and tutorials that we do here at That Office Guy. Right, with all that said, let's jump on over, Chris, um, over to the desktop and take a look at Microsoft Excel and how to do this. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, so here we are on Microsoft Excel, and we've just got some dummy data here, right? So we've got two fields, right? Date and a name. Uh, the dates are all a little bit mixed up. We've got uh, dates that are backwards and dates that are kind of in the, the regular format. Um, and we're gonna show you how to, you know, make sure that that's all correct as well. We have to see a name field here with uh, surnames before first names, um, and then there's a, a comma between them, or last names before first names with just a space between them, okay? So we're gonna show you how to kind of deconstruct these into meaningful fields and then put them the right way around uh, and set them up correctly, okay? So the first thing that we want to do is just click on column B here. The easiest way of doing this um, if you've got a comma or a semicolon, a tab, whatever it is, it's actually just use a delimit, right? In order to do that, so what you want to do is actually head over to the ribbon here, head over to the data tab, we'll give that a click, and then we come over to an area over here under data tools that says text to columns. If we give that a click, that's gonna load up this dialog box. We wanna make sure that we have a delimited um, option here selected, and then click on next. From here, we can have see there's loads of different options that you have and uh, basically delimit your text data. There's the tab, which is probably the default one that you would have selected. There's a semicolon, uh, a comma, a space, or any other special character that you can kind of come up with. So if you wanted to say, okay, delimit by C, you could do that if you wanted to, okay? Um, I would normally use this for something very specific if you were uh, in control of the raw data source itself. You could set up your own um, custom delimiter. Um, so for now, we're gonna use um, the comma, right? We can see the comma is right here. So we're gonna click on comma. We can see in this little demo, uh, this data preview, that everywhere where there was a comma, we split that into two columns, right? So we now have um, basically the surname and the first name, right? Um, split out, which is absolutely, you know, what we wanna do. Now, the other thing is here, we have some with just spaces. So if we click on the space as well, we then end up getting the two columns completely delimited, okay? So I'm just going to head um, and click on finish once you do that. And you can see that we now have uh, basically surnames and first names in the case of the first two options here. In these last two options, row four and row five, um, we had a first name before the, the surname and then we have a surname before the first name, right? So straight away, it's a little bit mixed up, isn't it? It's not quite you know mm. as consistent as you might need it to be. And it might be that you have several different data sources all being kind of pushed together and merged into one long list. And you know, ultimately you want to handle those data sets separately where possible using a, a, you know, a text to column function. Now that might not necessarily always be the case, um, but in the case where you have a first name in the wrong field, you're gonna have to try to figure those ones out manually uh, before kind of going through this process because otherwise you'll end up with a first name in the last name field, right? Because ultimately with the text to column, once you've done that, you'd rename this um, you know, last name, for example, and then first name, right? So that's how you would kind of go about doing it. Um, but when you have these in the wrong order, you're gonna have to then go ahead and switch them around and move them into the right order. So you have all of the surnames in the right columns, right? So if you have two different data sets, handle them separately in different tabs and then merge them after the fact. Um, otherwise you'll end up with potentially corrupted data. Uh, does that make sense to you, Chris? Yeah, it makes sense to me. Perfect. So straight away now we can see that we have the first name um, and a last name, okay, in two different columns. Now, if you want to reconstruct these in the right order, so you want to say full name, uh, there's a couple of formulas that you can use. Uh, most people uh, historically probably know that there's the formula called concatenate. Okay, concatenate is an old function though. It's kind of been replaced now by a new function called concat. 
okay, which is the newer up-to-date version. Um, it just basically makes it the same thing, just makes it a little bit easier to use because there's less typing involved. So you can go ahead and click on Concat. That's going to open up this function here where you can click on the first name. We can then do a head and put a comma. Open up um, a double quotation space, double quotation, hit a comma and set the last name um, and then close the bracket, right? So we have the first name, we have the space in between them and then we have the last name. We'll press return and then we end up with this new full name concatenated together or merge those text strings together, right? So then we end up with the name as it was intended. Um, sometimes you don't even need to do the full name. Sometimes a last name and a first name is all you actually need from your raw data. Uh, and if you ever did need to, you know, you can concatenate those things together. OK, so that's probably the simplest way of doing it. But there are other approaches to take, Chris. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just kind of go backwards a, a little bit here. Um, let me just yeah convert. Let me just do that. Right. So here we go right we have all of this raw data again i'm going for simplicity's sake i'm just going to go ahead and make this the right way around um so we'll just call it like that right so the other thing to do here is to actually find the delimiter in a formula right and then use that as an anchor point to delimit it yourself in a function and so this one this method allows you to and not have to you know create multiple columns and all that kind of stuff instead this allows you to create a formula that would do the whole entire thing for you so we go ahead and open up an equal sign here the first thing that we're going to do is use the find function okay and we're going to find um the you know, uh we're going to find in quotations a comma okay then we're going to hit a comma separately to get to the second part of the function here, which is where are we going to find the comma that we put into those quotations? We're going to find it in this in this cell here, right? So it's going to be um, B2 in our example. And then we're just going to close bracket. That's going to show us that actually the comma in this scenario is in row, uh, also in position six out of all of the characters, right? Now, if I copy this down, we'll notice that these two functions are not working, right? Because there are no commas. OK, so in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and just put an if statement in front here. Right. And I'm going to say, um, actually, I know what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the if error function because that's going to basically allow me to just get to the crux of what I'm looking for. Uh, and if it's uh, an error, then I'm going to do another find function um, and I'm going to this time look for a space because I know that's the second thing that's missing here. And, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to find that within this text and close that bracket. Uh, and then I'm going to close my if error function, press return. And this time, each of those values is now showing up in position six. So now the space is in position six and the comma is in position six. So we know that. Um, so the next thing to do here is we're going to be able to use something like um, a left function or a mid function. I'm going to use um, a mid function because this is going to allow me to do a couple of additional things. So I'm going to go ahead and type mid at the beginning of this function, open up a bracket. OK, and what I'm looking for is I'm looking for, um, you know, this text here. This is a text that I want to uh, return uh, and I'm going to want to return it within specific areas. Right. So I'm going to start off with looking for that first name. OK, so I'm going to hit a comma here. The start of my first name is the position of that comma plus one okay okay so you'll see the comma is position six but the c that i'm going to return is in position seven so with that done i'm then going to go ahead and hit a comma again and this time i'm just going to go with 99 characters and um, obviously it isn't 99 characters but basically it's everything from c to a maximum of 99 characters i'm going to press return and you can see it returns chris right so i'm going to pull this down and we can see it's returned chris chris nick and nick right so all of these um, first names now, with this formula here, we can easily now just copy this mid function. OK, um, copy that. Come back to, uh, let's just go to another cell here for simplicity's sake before I merge this together for you. Paste that formula in. This time, what we're going to do is we're not going to start it at plus one. OK, we're going to actually start this at position zero. OK, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just delete all of that. This time, our mid function is going to be find this text. After the comma, we're going to start this at position one, and then we're going to hit a comma. For how many characters do we want to use it for? It's going to be all the way up to here, right? That's our sixth position minus one. So our if error, our find, uh, we basically now want that to be minus one. I'm going to press return, and that's going to give us a surname of Regan. And I can pull that down, and we can see that that is working across both of those, right? Um, so guys, I may have made that really 
speedy for you guys. But um, Chris, does that make sense to you? Did you follow that? Yeah, no, it makes sense to me. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is actually use this second formula that I just put it into this second column as a reference point. But uh, yeah, I'm going to copy that out. And I'm actually going to use it in a concat function directly in this formula, right? So I can go concat, open up a bracket. Um, the whole mid function for the uh, first name is going to be left as it is. And we're going to put a comma at the very end. This time I'm going to put an open quotation um, and close quotation with a space in between them. Press comma and paste in our second formula, our mid second formula for the surname. Pre and then just close the bracket at the end there, press return. Uh, and this formula now returns the entire full name uh, in one clean function. Um, that basically now takes all of these random raw text data and puts it into a meaningful full name. We obviously don't need the surname there in column D, I can get rid of that. Um, and that will be how you would approach it from a formula perspective. We've used uh, basically one, two, three, um, four different formulas merged together in one simple function, and that will basically deconstruct and reconstruct um, your uh, raw data of a name. Okay, so, so pretty simple, Chris, I think when you really break it down uh, mm -hmm. into first of all, find the delimiter, um, find the position of that, and then basically use that position left, right, and, and use basically the mid function to, to, to determine um, how many characters um, either the first name is, return that, and then concatenate uh, the first name with the surname using the same setup. Um, so I can call that full name uh, as a title, and it takes like a matter of moments to really figure that out to, to do. So the next thing we want to focus in on is the date, right? So with all of these date fields, if they come through in a lots of random different ways, uh, there's lots of different things you can do here. The first way and the easiest way would be to select column A, come over to the home tab, come over to um, basically this area here where it says general uh, and then number, right? I'm going to go ahead and just click on this little number format box uh, and that's going to pop up this dialog, right? For this house just to format the entire column A. So what we're going to do is we're going to hop down here to date and then we're going to choose the date format that we actually want, right? So um, for me, uh, being in the UK, I'm going to go for this one here. Um, and then we're going to click on OK. Now our dates are all constructed in exactly the same way, right? So it's the day, the month, and the year. Um, and if you want to do that in any different way, you can come back into this option uh, and choose any of these options that you would like. So if you want it to be um, spelt out, you can do that. Um, and again, in, back into here, you can even go to custom. You can come in and put your own date ranges in as you would see fit as well. So lots of different things that you can do um, to deconstruct your dates and reconstruct them from just the format function alone. And beyond that, you, sometimes you might find that actually uh, you need to, you know, actually, you know, deconstruct it slightly differently. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and just go back a, a moment or two here. So where you have... Uh, some of this in, in the wrong kind of function. Ultimately, the date function from the number formatting should solve the majority of your problems. If it does not, using a similar method that we did here, you can go ahead and find uh, all of these kind of slashes or whatever you know breaks up your date and, and pull these back out into parts, right? So you could have a year uh, in a column, you could have a month in a column, and you could have a day in a column, and then you can build up your actual date yeah, separately, right? Or again, you can build it all in one very neat formula as well when you get a little bit more advanced. So ultimately, you know, try using the number formatting box that will help majority of the time. Uh, and if not, then you go ahead and split them out uh, using the same way that we did for the full name here. Um, and that will allow you to then reconstruct that date in a very similar way. I won't spend any more time kind of going through that with you guys. I think that's uh, you know, trial messing around with um, you know, deconstructing and reconstructing the names uh, and have a mess around with how to do that for uh, dates as well. Chris, anything you want to add at this point? No, super Nick, that was a great breakdown, thanks. Fantastic, right. So guys, um, I think it's relatively straightforward to do, pretty simple. 
uh, and a nice way to kind of you know, elevate your skills within Microsoft Excel. Um, we used four functions kind of nested together to deliver a full name, deconstructed from raw data where the surname was before the uh, first name and with two different delimiters. Sometimes there might be more. Um, and as I said, text the columns is your friend. I would utilize that if you're ever uncertain about using functions and formulas to get you that end result that you're looking for. As always, if you found this useful and informative, do go ahead and smash that like button. And as always, if you're new to the channel and not yet subscribed, do go ahead and subscribe. By being subscribed, you will be kept up to date with all of the videos uh, that we do here at That Office Guy. And with that said, we hope you have a fantastic day and we'll catch you all in the next one. Super, take care.